Here's a weird thing that leaked. Apparently, Stuttering John made a phone call to Brent Hatley. Hmm. Left him a voicemail. <laughs> and so this is out there. Uh, wait for the ad. That's where it gets fun. Hey, Brent. Uh, this is uh, Stuttering John. Um, I heard you. Well, why not just this is John or John Melendez? This is Stuttering John. Yeah. <laughs> you might know me from The Tonight Show with yeah. Jay Leno. Uh, yeah. I was on The Howard Stern Show. <laughs> Stephanie Miller, he starts reading this I credits. played the trumpet in second grade. Substitute teacher. Yeah. Um, I heard you were trying. I picked you up with that Uber once. <laughs> yeah. You tipped me. <laughs> trying to get a hold of me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, so I don't know. At Stuttering John M, if you want to DM me. I'm not really keen on giving out this new number because um, I had to change it because of all the trolls. So, uh, you know, I don't really give it out to anybody. So, uh, I'll try you back, you know, but, um, yeah, Shirley's a piece of shit. I'm, you know, <laughs> if I see him, I'm going to beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. I like how he's already saying, I'll try you back. He's already rejected. Yeah, yeah, he, I, <laughs> yeah. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> also, it's funny that he's, he's not leaving his number because I was talking to Monique and he left a message for her, or I think her husband, who was an attorney. And um, left his phone number like five times. I didn't write it down. I don't give a shit what his phone number is, but I, I could easily get it if, yeah. if we wanted to. And, but we, that's not what we do around here, obviously. So at the end of it, he threatens to beat the shit out of Shuli. Yeah. John, you don't intimidate anyone. You're so out of shape. He washed the dishes and almost puked. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was so dehydrated from washing the dishes. It took him like three tries <laughs> to get through all of his dishes. <laughs> and he, he still said, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why drinking a gallon of sugar on top of a hangover made you almost puke. <laughs> he did. He did puke. He did an abominate. Yeah. Remember, he was drinking beer in his car with the keys in the ignition. He just keeps breaking the law every fucking <laughs> every time he turns around. This guy. He was drinking a beer in his car, and then he drank another beer, and then he came on his show later and goes. I didn't even want to drink those beers. I was not feeling good. Like, dude, <laughs> you didn't have to drink those beers. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> You're not you're not a beer drinking contest. You know what I mean? It's like one thing if you have to eat hot dogs, you're like fuck, I can't eat another hot dog, but I gotta win this contest, right. you know? Yeah. But he's he's acting like he's in a fucking frat party. He's gonna yeah. be called out. What time of day did he leave this message? Do you wonder? Is it like post drinking, pre drinking? He sounded lucid, so it's probably pre drinking, pre beers on the so balcony. So ejected. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, John is getting weird with his schedule because he's up at. 6 a.m. his time, which it might be even 3 a.m. his time, 6 a.m. our time, tweeting shit like the tweet he put out today with his fun little Photoshop that sucked that he thinks he's getting over on us. Like he's, he's up early doing this. I don't know what's going on with this guy. I mean, I, I do know that he probably drinks too much. You like how we, I said that? I do know yeah. that he probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need like a dry erase board with a, a list of all the laws that he's broken that we oh. can just keep adding. To. Oh, that's a good uh, idea. Yeah. 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 Well, leaving that voicemail, would that be on the list? Saying you're going to kick somebody's fucking ass? Yeah. Seems like a threat, sending, right? Sending somebody to threat somebody well, with a cane. That's obviously. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I was. Um, it's not illegal if they're wearing denim. <laughs> yeah. I was watching uh, the Uncle Rico show with uh, Vinny FBI, who was at that show. He was the feature act for Shuli. And Vinny FBI thinks that there were two guys there. He thinks he saw another guy, too. Huh? So maybe it wasn't just. Um, Hitman Dan. <laughs> you make him sound cute now. I know. Oh, it's Hitman Dan. Get up on stage, Hitman Yeah, Dan. do that thing where you threaten me. <laughs> yeah, do that thing. Someone get him a mic. Who's yeah. got a wireless? <laughs> get Jenny Jiggles to walk him out. <laughs> One wireless mic to this guy. Ugh. So, um, in other news, Suttering John has sold his apartment. I'm breaking that here, I believe. This is my insider guy. He says the, the sale has happened. San Diego. Not no, not Gary from San Diego. Not him. Oh, where are you, Gary? You to be all over this. <laughs> well, apparently he sold his apartment. And I said, "Well, how much did he get for it? Three hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars. Oh, it was listed at four twenty-four oh. when he first listed it. That's a hit. Oof, ah, that's a hit. <laughs> that, ooh, that, as Gary would say, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yikes. Selling in a buyer's market, everybody. Yeah, dude, fucking wrong time to do that. You should have recognized you had no future years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder where he's going to go from here, though. That'll be interesting to see. 
Because I, I, you know, we have friends out in LA, and, and they tell me about the different neighborhoods and, and what's going on. Canoga Park, you know, not great. And so I'm wondering, <laughs> where does he go from there? It's not going to go up the hills. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I mean, I think I we already... I was thinking a Beverly know. Hills storage unit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a beautiful place called uh, Death Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pull a Nick Nolte from Down and Out in Beverly Hills. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Another thing that was brought up, I think, by Vinny FBI. Have we ever brought this up before? The Southern John is literally Kurt Van Houten. At this point, he's literally Kurt Van Houten. Like, I sleep to... in a race car bed. Yeah. Do you? His kids don't respect him. His wife hates his guy. He needs to borrow a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to Photoshop it with blue hair. He used to be a big shot down at the Cracker Factory. <laughs> All right. That's great. My, my demo tape. <laughs> I, guys, we've stalled enough time. I think it's. I think we could get going into the, some clips here because I will. Stuttering John did one of the worst shows I've ever seen in my life. Oh my on god! Thursday, how can you say now that? That's I know. Right? I'm telling you, if there's a record for uh, oh. he set the fucking uh record. Alert <laughs> the media. All right, this is a great way to start your show. So, Eliza's <laughs> face. We started 20 minutes late today. It's because I was having some tech issues. And I decided to uh, fix them before we started. Hey, good so, call. Um, <laughs> it didn't even occur to me there'd be any other way to do it. But <laughs> this is how John starts his show, by texting people. And uh, let me just, uh, someone just text me there. Uh, Okie dokie. All right. This is a show. Yeah, he's literally typing with one hand. He's petting his Sorry, cockroaches. I had to text. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. All right. So that's how the show starts. So you're already riveted. Like, wow, what's going to happen next? Oh, the show's got that fire. <laughs> so the next part is apparently he's been blocking people he shouldn't be blocking. <laughs> And I blocked so many people. Yeah. I blocked the wrong one. Right. That's literally not what happened. the first time. Yeah, not the first time either. And this might be a sign that you're blocking too many people. I just spent like 45 minutes trying to find C.W. Patterson and Carlene Martin, and I couldn't. 45 minutes, and I can't find their name. So I, I'm trying to unblock them, but I can't find them. I wish they had a date that they remember they were blocked. <laughs> It's on, it's, on it's on them. It's on them to figure it out. He has so many people he's blocked. He's going through the list. It takes 45 minutes. And he still couldn't find them. He has more blocked viewers than actual viewers. Well, that, that <laughs> is an actual true. blockage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is very true. And that was actually one of the people on Dabblers even mentioned, like John. He should just unblock everyone. Unblock everyone. Yeah. yeah. And so, do one show a week where you just like take questions from the trolls, take super chats from the trolls, and we'll all come up with funny questions, yeah. and we'll all get a good laugh. We'll even let you block, say, two people per show. <laughs> yeah. All right? Well, he mentioned Carlene Martin. Carlene Martin is the beloved Chatta. Who once gave him 200 bucks and she was trying to give him 20? Oh, by accident. Yeah, yeah and then she, she's like, oh, fuck, I can't pay rent now. And he's like, I'll give you back. Oh, oh, she wants the money back. You're blocked. You're blocked. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Remember, he was going to give her back like 130 bucks because, yeah. well, I'm not going to get the whole 200 because uh, YouTube takes some. Shipping and handling. <laughs> YouTube yeah. took a cut. Yeah. You're shit out of luck. <laughs> and I already spent part of it. All right, let's get into the Oz. <laughs> I think. The Oz I think it. he says. Isotopes here? Okay. Listen closely. I don't know what's going Isotopes. on. Isotopes? Um, isotope. Ost, osu, I don't know what that means. I don't use soap. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So this next clip, I did not edit this in any way. I just clipped it from his show. This is literally, and remember, this is the beginning of a show, when you should have notes and prep and be ready to go and have things to talk about. He was just doing the roll call thing, but God. even that's very confusing for him for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> that was a new twist. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, what a dullard. <laughs> I, I was uh, messaging with Drew Lane today, and he's like, I'll pay John $5,000 to come to the Magic Bag next year and be part of the WATP show. 
And he goes, actually, we could probably get an even bigger venue. If we can get John in, it'd be, it'd be huge. Yeah. And I said, yeah, fucking A, let's do it. And I'll let John just do his own show. Like, John, you got an hour, buddy. Go. Let's see what you got. I just want to see him up there. And you and me are in the balcony, oh, like Staller and Waldo. <laughs> oh. can you, yeah, can you imagine if he just came out? And it's a packed house. Yeah. And he sits down and he just goes, uh. Dude, and everybody would erupt. lose their mind. Yeah, right. The place would erupt with laughter. <laughs> He's playing all the hits. Wait, I didn't start yet. Yeah. <laughs> the bar is so low for this guy. The point is this. I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that one myself. Yeah. <laughs> I came up with that one on the call right over. <laughs> the point is this, John. I came up with that sitting on the toilet. <laughs> it was off the muff. <laughs> Sorry. You're not a broadcaster, John. You're not good at broadcasting. And I don't care what you think of me. You've told me that I don't have any talent many times, even though you also say you don't listen. You've never watched me. So who knows what any of that means. But you are terrible. You are... If you took... A handicapped child, put him in front of a webcam mm -hmm. and said, put together a show. I'd watch that. <laughs> Actually, can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who are these tards? <laughs> Welcome to WATT. <laughs> Uh-oh, I went across the line with that one. <laughs> this fucking asshole still showing off that dark branded shirt. Yeah. He got two new shirts, and he wears them every other day now. He's so right. excited. I'm sorry, I interrupted your analogy. So if you were to do such a thing. It'd be better than John Shaw. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Glad that you're back. There's my dark Brandon t-shirt. Neat. Um, <laughs> feel free child. to keep the super chats coming. <laughs> feel free. Feel free to keep giving me money. Yeah, yeah we know, John. Feel free. <laughs> you mentioned it quite a bit. We're, we're pretty aware of what I, you want us to do. I'm very <laughs> out of the loop. What is dark Brandon? What does that even fucking mean? We'll I don't get that. it. All right, I, I don't get it either. I'll try to explain this to you. Um, John thinks that the current president of the United States is doing a good job. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> for some reason, by um, stealing the Let's Go Brandon meme from yeah. the right, they think that they now own it. And now they think that he's so badass. You know, his, his eyes are red, dark brand. Like, watch out. I'm going to take $10,000 off of people's oh. debt. I'm dark branded. So it's must like, have seen this at So it's like stops. rappers taking ownership of the N word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it, but I let you. <laughs> He's so fucking proud of that shirt. It's so. Yeah. And I like how he's like, well, I showed you my shirt. You show me the super chat. Yeah, I know. He goes, here's my shirt. By the yeah. way, shirts cost money. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Not that much, but. Yeah, I know it's a cheap shirt. Ugh, it's so stupid. All right. This is John. Once again, distractions, tech issues, anything you could expect from Centering John. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So let me, let me make sure that let me invite Pope Park again. Because I don't know if he's got the invitation, because he's not here. Michael Popak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, he's asking for a resend. He's asking for uh, it again. Uh, 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 all right, uh, Marianne, I... Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, don't uh, try not to text when I'm doing the show. It's a little distracting, dude. You got to get over that, my friend. You're having a one-sided conversation yeah. and He's, just going uh, in uh, one microphone. Uh, it's stop, not a, stop texting me while I'm doing my show. Hey, you're interrupting my meditation. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> There's got to be a new classification for what this is because it's not a show. It's a train wreck. Is what it is. Yeah. It's great. I love it. It's not a show, though, John. You're not doing a show. You're not a broadcaster in any single way. I do like that he said this. Look, I've been drunk before. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that one on the board. Yeah. That's always good. All right. The big news here, of course, is that they lost the lawsuit with Sirius XM. They finally came out and said, the, no. On his, on his birthday. <laughs> on his birthday, I know. So great. It's great. So, so Michael, on my birthday, no less, uh, we get the unfortunate uh, loss by the appellate court. And what say you? <laughs> 
Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go spend another 17 years of your career doing creative work for which you're not properly compensated. And let's bring that case again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, wait a second. Did he just change the whole case right there? Now he's trying to say John wasn't paid enough while he was an employee at the Howard Stern show, which is not something you can sue for decades later. Yeah. That's your fault. Yeah, if you you're not making enough money. You accepted the terms of that. Right, yeah. you either ask for more money or leaving another job. Popak just said, I have to play that again because it's so fucking stupid. I know that this guy is an attorney. I'm sure he's great at what he does. But this case, I don't know that he knows what the fuck is going on with this. Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go spend another 17 years of your career doing creative work for which you're not properly compensated. And let's bring that case again. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, it, that's not what the case was. It was right to publicity was the case. It wasn't that he was underpaid on the Howard Stern show. I could make the argument that he was wildly overpaid. At the Howard Stern show. A lot of people could. A lot of people could. (laughs) Because honestly, when John left the show, did it get worse? Does anyone think that the show got worse when John left the show? Is anyone like, (laughs) well, I can't listen to Stern anymore because no more stuttering John on there. I liked when you said uh, that you were sure that Michael Popak is good at what he does. Producer Chris was like, what, what, what? I mean, this guy's an attorney. I don't want him suing me. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Just a look Chris gave was like, huh? What? Yeah, what's he great at? Yeah. Well, that's a good question because this is him explaining why they lost the case. See, the thing is is that they had zero evidence that Sirius did what they were accusing Sirius of doing. And let me break it down. We've talked about this before. Basically, what the California law is, is you can't take a celebrity and make it seem like they're endorsing your product without compensating them. So I can't put up a billboard with Michael Jordan that says, who are these podcasts? I fucking dunk all over this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good one, though. A good one, though. <laughs> I would check out that podcast. <laughs> you can't do that. Michael Jordan could sue for the right to publicity because he's a famous person, and I'm trying to profit off of that. So their whole point is that Stuttering John on Sirius XM is using John. So the, uh, the judges were like, is there an example of them using John to promote Sirius XM or... Howard 101, try to get subscriptions, anything, anything you could point to. Well, here's this decade, a decade and a half. They've had Howard 101 playing reruns of the old Howard Stern show and promos coming up after the break, all that kind of stuff. One example where it makes it seem like Stuttering John is endorsing Sirius XM or this channel or anything, and they couldn't find it. And this is what Popak says. And I believe to this day that if we could have gotten past the filing of the complaint, the pleading in the case and gotten into discovery, we would have found a number of the items that the second circuit wanted me to have already things that were only in the file cabinets, the drawers, the mind of Sirius XM and the Howard Stern show. No, it's, it's not in file cabinets. It's on the air. They had to have played it at some point. If you have a subscription and the audio exists, you can find it. They, they have a, a whole staff of a people. A whole catalog, yeah. And, and so what he's doing here is he's covering his ass. He's, he did a shit job. Yeah. He did a real, <laughs> real shit job. Oh, yeah. I mean, they sh- never should have brought this case. And so now he's trying to cover his ass and just be like, yeah, but if they had let this lawsuit go through and we had discovery, then they would have handed over, okay, you're right. Here's the, yeah. here's the thing. You were right all along. Like, that's not how this works at all. Of course that's not how this you works. You know what he's great at? He's great at acting. And he's got John believing everything he says. Well, it doesn't make any sense because he took the case pro bono and he put all this time into it and they never had a chance at it. So this is him explaining that it wasn't about copyright, obviously. That you have a what's called a right of publicity that stands separate and apart from the copyright statute. Because the big fight in the case was under the Copyright Act, we're dead because... You don't own the copyright. The copyright was owned by the Howard Stern Show. And it's very hard to argue that you have your own independent copyright. But we had an argument under California law, which applied that um, I'm trying to read other people's interpretation. Oh, I'm sorry. Just just listen to me. Just (laughs) just listen to me. I handle the case. Everybody, everything else is 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 blather. Just listen to what 
I'll give you the straight shot like we do every time on legal, yeah. on legal <laughs> AF. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, um, yeah, he said the alarm. He's like, I'm not talking to Jeff for more than 20 minutes. John. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens when you have all these alarms going off? <laughs> yeah. Let me You're get back to where man, I was. Mike. Bullshit alarm. <laughs> Sorry about that. You got to make wedding plans. <laughs> give me one minute. Again, looking at John's reaction, it looks like this is all news to him. Yeah. Like they must have discussed this. No, I don't think point. I don't think he can get Popak on the phone. Okay. I think this is the first time they've had this conversation <laughs> since the lawsuit was was dismissed. And it's so funny that he's explaining, you know, we couldn't go after the copyright. And then someone in the comments is like, Yeah, and they said that the the copyright is the reason why the right publicity doesn't work. He's like, ah, ah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, hey, you have the right to promotion. That means you can say Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show. That's all you get. That's all you get. All right. So this is funny because Popak is now trying to figure out the little victories that were achieved along the way. Uh, you lost. Yeah. You lost, buddy. It wasn't all So we went through two complaints with Judge Crotty. He finally denied the last one. We took it to the Second Circuit. Now, Second Circuit does not take every appeal. So the fact that we even got them to agree to the appeal was a victory in your, on your end. No. <laughs> Let me explain uh, with a sports metaphor. Let's say you're down 21 to 7 going into halftime, but you're the team that scored that seven points right at the end of the first half. You're like, whoa, we got some momentum now. And then you end up losing 42 to 7. Like, dude, you lost. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a loss. You were losing when you made the appeal. You were already, were you already losing. They accepted it. You lost again. You lost. You're a loser. Yeah. It was not, there's nothing good about this. Yeah. Nothing you can say that was like, well, at least this happened. Like, no, it's yeah. all embarrassing. Yeah. No, it's like if, it, if it's fourth and one and then you try and get in the end zone and there's a flag on the play and you get to do it again and then you still don't get in the end zone, <laughs> you're still fucking lost. Yeah. But they threw that flag, though. We had a chance. Remember that? Remember well, back when we had a chance? Welcome to sports talk. <laughs> all right. So this is funny because listen to the spin. I'll let, I'll let this clip play, and then I'll explain to you because I'm, I'm getting familiar with how attorneys spin things now. I watch a lot of Better Call Saul. <laughs> and even the lawyer for Sirius XM, who, who, I, who I have nothing bad to say about, he was a gentleman. Even Pomeran said to me in the hallway, wow, they really are interested in this case, and they gave you, for, for John's side, a lot more time than I thought they were going to do. Yeah. He was basically saying, like, I can't believe they took this seriously. I'm yeah. shocked that they even heard you out on this one. This is such a no-brainer, open-and-closed case. That's literally what the guy was saying to him. He was like, holy shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> Someone thinks you got something. I mean, the we trolls don't reach very far. <laughs> we, got a lot, <laughs> we got a lot further than I thought we would. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's he going to say this time? Let's find out. All right, so let's find <laughs> out the other reasons why he's taking a... He's trying to spin this as if there's some type of moral victory yeah. or something going on. And at the end, they rejected our appeal. You know, 90% of appeals get rejected. But it took them 34 pages, and they made some new law related to it. So all they had to do was say, denied, or trial court affirmed. But they spent 34 pages to sort of make new law, explain the law, to use this case as a vehicle in that area. So if anybody that doesn't practice law think it was really easy and it was a loser case and John shouldn't have brought it and Popak, whatever, you know, it took a second circuit, 34 pages to tell us we were wrong. All right. That's so funny. Oh, we, you know, we, we, it was a waste of time, but we wasted a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> we didn't just waste our time. We wasted these judges' time, your state. We cost taxpayer money. We did a lot of things. Fucking idiot. So let me interpret my interpretation of that, and yeah. people can tell me if I'm wrong or not. The fact that they had to write out all of these pages was so that they don't deal with this horse shit ever again. They don't want anyone else to be like, oh, I'm going to start suing people for right, right to publicity because it's a stupid thing to try to do. Yeah. Unless it's cut and dry like I was talking about my, my amazing Michael Jordan example. <laughs> yeah. That I think really spelled things out for everyone. It was pretty good. <laughs> but the fact that they had to like do that, they're just like, all right, I never want to hear this nonsense in my court uh, again. Yeah. Can we just make it very clear? Let's yeah. set a precedent that this is You're not right. how this works. Some prosecutor in 20 years from now will be like, I'd like to cite Melendez versus Sirius XM <laughs> yeah, as right. this is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There will be cited in the future yeah unless it goes to the supreme court <laughs> <You're right. laughs> which i don't think Polpak thinks that's gonna happen but look it's the end of the line 
Um, could we appeal to the Supreme Court of the United States? We could, but you know the chances were slight at the Second Circuit. They get a lot worse. It's like climbing Mount Everest without oxygen at the Supreme Court level. No shit, Sean. No shit. We could take the, the Supreme Court, but there's a pretty good chance we won't win. Yeah, pretty good chance. There's no way they would hear that case. Is John going to run a uh, victory lap over there being new laws because of him? Oh, yeah, of course. that That's what they're excited about. So, I also inspired the no shirt, no shoes, no service <laughs> policy <laughs> that's now famous. <laughs> Must clip toenails is yeah. written at the beach. That's all me. <laughs> they had to add no pants because of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Must wipe before leaving the stall. Oh. <laughs> Not just employees, also you, John. <laughs> That's what the sign says. All right, so let's get down to the real reason why any of this happened. The reason why Michael Popak took this case pro bono. The whole reason why all of this exists. Well, well I'll tell you, Michael, is, is this another example of big corporations beating up on the little guy? Well, I know there was a lot of people that that on my Twitter feed that were in your camp, were in your supporters, and said, "Yeah, this- define a lot of people." <laughs> <laughs> this is an example of just Sirius XM crushing the little guy yeah. when they should have, you know. Listen, I can't make somebody enter into a settlement dialogue with me, but I think what we really hoped is after they, you know, saw the equity and the merits of the argument, and they saw things like the fact that you were so underpaid. I think we figured out that if you average it over 17 years, including the time that you were an unpaid, completely unpaid intern, which is illegal today, you can't be an unpaid intern. So he's the little guy in this. I thought he was a celebrity when he went into this lawsuit. Correct. I know. He wants it both ways. Okay. But what Popak just admitted is they were hoping for a settlement. Right. They just wanted the Sirius XM to go, I don't want to deal with we'll this We'll throw shit. money at this. Yeah. So. How much How much to make you guys go away? Yeah. And the problem with that is, which is, it's fine. If you want to take a shot at that, I have no problem with that. Take money from Sirius XM. Who gives a shit? They give too much money to Howard Stern anyway. Right. But if, if that's what their thought was, John should not have gone on and said, and after I win this case, there's going to be 30 other people in line. Yeah. Because literally, it's like any whack packer, anyone who showed up on the show at any point, they could also have the same case. And then Sirius XM was like, oh, I guess now we got to pay fucking Elegant Elliot often. And what what the fuck? Every fucking guy? If you kept it quiet, then maybe they they wouldn't be like, well, we can't have this getting out. But you had to open your stupid mouth on your fucking podcast and let everybody get in line for a handout that they weren't going to give. Right. And my question is, if they were to, like, settle with him. Yeah. What's the bare minimum he would if they were just like, well, here's eight hundred dollars. Right, right. right. Like, taken John, it. I think we should take it. Yeah. I was thinking <laughs> at least Sharon Stone money. But whatever. <laughs> well, the crazy part is too, he thought that they would settle because John was so underpaid. John worked for K Rock. You're suing Sirius XM. Yeah. They have nothing to do with each other. Right. Could you imagine a corporation being like, wait, you only made that much money? Oh, well, then, yeah, we'll throw them a few bucks. That sucks. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> Why would they possibly care about that? It's not their fault. It's John's fault. John's fault he didn't make any fucking money at K-Rock. Such a moron. Uh, Tom Giassano, man. The original fucking dabbler. He knew, he knew from day one this guy was a worthless piece of shit. <laughs> and he was right. Oh, uh, what if uh, Jay. Wait, oh, I was going to say, what muttering if Tom Chiasano is muttering Jay? Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a drop for that. <laughs> wow, Andy blown it wide open. Mm. Tom Chiasano is fucking with John to this day as muttering Jay. That'd That's fucking great. funny. All right. This is, um, this is interesting because we're going to talk about how much money Popak had to charge John. For all of this but i i just feel bad mike that you worked so hard and and we didn't get yeah. a victory don't, for yours you know yeah don't, i appreciate that i appreciate your the sentiment but you know every year or so i take on what's called a pro bono case john was not charged for our time which was considerable probably if you add up all my team and the briefing schedule and the case below you're probably talking about I don't know, 500 hours, 600 hours of time. That's a half a million dollars of investment. (laughs) All right. So 
what Michael Popak is saying is that his team spent 500 hours on this case. They couldn't find one fucking example. Do you, I mean, if you're going to spend that much time, listen to Sirius XM and find one fucking example. Get some evidence for your case. What were they doing? What were they spending all their time doing? Laughing their asses <laughs> off. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. And by the way, if he did have his firm spend a half a million dollars, For if free? I was his business partner, I'd be like, oh, buddy, what are we doing? <laughs> we just wasted a half a million dollars on this fucking loser. Have you seen the dabblers and out of his subreddit? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? We're the laughing stock yeah. of this shit. So then you went pro bono for that pro bozo, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, amateur bozo, but yeah. yeah. Then uh, it's funny because someone brings up, all right, what if the Supreme Court takes another case that's similar to this case and sets a precedent? Then would you actually appeal and try to go to the Supreme Court? And this question is so stupid that Michael Polpak pretends to have technology problems. <laughs> and leaves the show. Elizabeth, thanks for the five bucks. Uh, if a similar case prevails in the Supreme Court, could you still appeal minute. John's case? It seems like his internet's working that, fine. He's not freezing up. He looks great. <laughs> Hold on, John. I'm having I can, problems. I can hear him fine. Okay. Beep, pork, pop. Yeah, well, <laughs> going in the elevator, John. Nah. Whoops. <laughs> As we we will go back to Herschel Walker commentary. What a lunatic. Does, <laughs> doesn't remember. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 that, Down I, goes Pope Puck. That, I'm driving through a uh, uh, tunnel. Uh, uh, dirt. <laughs> so he, he brings up that question. Pope Puck pretends to have tech issues, leaves. He comes back, and stupid John doesn't take the fucking hint and brings it up again. Um, here's, a, here's a question for you, Mike. If a similar case prevails in the Supreme Court, could you still appeal John's case? Oh, well. <laughs> I'm freezing up. Are you just stuck again on this question? Uh, He's just like, oh, I'm frozen. Yeah. Or, or do you not know ah, the answer? Problems. <laughs> oh, you're having problems. Are you freezing up or do you not know Every the answer? Every time I bring up this question. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Get the hint. Yeah. <laughs> Take a dummy. Can you hear me? Watch this. This is funny. Mouthing it's Can not you gonna... hear me? Mouthing it's not going to help. <laughs> Can you hear me? It's like, well, if he can't, you mouthing it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. I'm Luke, trying to ignore you. I am your father. Ugh. God. Popak. Popak, are you there? Ugh. Are we going back to Greenbow and see Jenny? Oh, Jesus. That's Christ. all I have to say about it. He does these impersonations. Oh you swear it was the real person. Spot on. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, John. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, he's got it. <laughs> Elizabeth, every time I bring up your question, yeah. he goes blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Coincidence? Wants to... I think not. He doesn't want to answer that question, John. That's specifically what's going on there. But that's not going to stop John. He gets Michael Pullback back, oh, Michael Pullback back no. on the show for one more round of this. And uh, this is great. Can you dig it? Can you hear me? You can't hear me. You can't hear me, can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? No, I can't. Yeah. Are you sleeping? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I'm calling it. That's the last time John will ever talk to Michael Popak. Yeah, that's, that's it. He just he just hell sparked him right there. That's oh, that's done. Fuck. Never that's again. So great. Now, personally, I think John puts on a very high quality show. I enjoy the shit out of it, mm -hmm. as you guys can tell. Sure. We're all having a lot of laughs. John, for some reason, is very bored of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh Titan. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Ugh. Albeit a little belated. Uh, <laughs> no one can do any uh, right. Okay. You didn't even super chat. Where were you Thanks. two days ago, asshole? <laughs> God damn. Well, I knew you were losing your appeal. I really didn't want to, you know. Guys, we've never done a show based on my birthday. Can we do that this year? Can we make a big deal like get oh balloons and shit? <laughs> <laughs> do a whole fucking stream and get all of our friends over. Let's have a big fucking birthday party like this retard. All right. 
I know for a fact that betonline.ag is so excited to promote Stuttering John's show, to endorse his show, because he, they get really good ad reads, very compelling. It always makes me want to bet online with betonline.ag. Okay. Betonline.ag is the fastest and easiest way <laughs> to fall asleep. <laughs> on all your favorite sports contests and events with first to market odds in line. I can just see the CMO going. All right, so we do have some notes on that latest read. Um, John, <laughs> can you pretend to be excited about the product? Can you fake enthusiasm a little bit? Like, <laughs> you know, shit, even if you don't shit. have money to bet, yeah, you can pretend. Pretend that you do. <laughs> Fucking yawning through an ad read. This guy's amazing. He did learn from Howard Stern. I remember that's what Stern would always do. Yeah. You know, he'd always yawn <laughs> through all the ad reads. Steven Singer, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Singer, Jewelers. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Doesn't, doesn't end there, guys. 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. But I lie. <laughs> that AG where the game starts. I'm not tired. It's I just have a... The thing with the yawns here. I yeah, don't you're know just why. bored yeah. out of your mind. A lack of NG. <laughs> yeah, you're just bored. Yeah. I just didn't eat, eat enough bologna yeah. before the show. <laughs> Basically, what's happening here is that Popak pretended that his internet crapped out because he was done talking to John. It's like, okay, never again. And so now John has time to fail because he's waiting for the great Richard Ojeda, uh, oh, the Army Major Richard Ojeda, to show up. And John's really bad at killing time. He's got nothing prepared. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So we go there. We go here. And then, uh, okay. All right, let me go back here. <laughs> <laughs> to what <All> end? To right. <laughs> what? What's he doing? Okay. <laughs> when are they going to get to the fireworks factory? Oh, wow. <laughs> Anthony has his own line of food products, huh? Okay. Hilarious. Um, let's see. Oh, here's one. Throwback, throwback Thursday. <laughs> so... All of that that you just saw, that I just tortured our listeners with, was him trying to pull up his Twitter feed, his own Twitter feed. Yeah, it took that long. It took long. that long. This over here, that over there, carry the two. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why did it take that long to get to your Twitter feed? And then when he does get to his Twitter feed, because no one can see it anymore, he's fucking retweeting Clamoring Carl. This is what he's spending his fucking time with. Clamoring Carl. <laughs> Retweeting Clamoring Carl. God damn it, John. You're a fucking loser. You're, you're not on the same level as everyone who's making fun of you. I hope you realize that. But that doesn't stop John from complimenting himself. So then he sees he posted a photo of himself when he was younger. And then he can't help but compliment himself. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Throwback. Throwback Thursday. Look at that handsome young man. That's a little Chris Cornellish, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Come on, ladies. Look at that good looking man. All right. <laughs> Are you done with that now, John? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I bet he's just pack. a little while longer. Yeah. I hope he ends up like Chris Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, John. I mean, that's embarrassing even for John, right? To scroll through his own Twitter feed yeah. where he posted a throwback Thursday. is not a thing anymore. What was, it? What was the last time you saw throwback Thursday? <laughs> it's It was for bored people to begin yes, with. Yes, it's mean. for losers to begin with. John's posting photos of himself, not his family, yeah. not his friends, yeah. not a pint. <laughs> All gone. <laughs> <laughs> All of it's gone. None of it's left. And he's complimenting himself. So then he's scrolling through and he wants to find something from the Midas Touch Brothers. Remember those guys? Oh, yeah. Been a while, right? Yeah. It turns yeah they out, want nothing to do with him anymore oh, either. I have some evidence of that. And it's funny you say that. And then, and then the Midas tweeted out this, which I love. And this is a wait. Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, even though they've been dissing me, I asked them to come on for my birthday. And I haven't heard back. I know they're busy, but, you know. They tweeted, fuck your birthday. 
<laughs> they are done with you, John. <laughs> They're they, so funny. <laughs> they are done with you. Anyone who takes themselves seriously, especially in this political realm that he's in, is done with John. They see how much toxicity there is. Richard Ojeda will be by his side forever because Richard Ojeda is a crackpot. Yeah. This fucking guy is, just wants to murder everyone. He is insane, this guy. Yeah. You could tell this guy, hey, you know, uh, Trucker Andy, I heard that he drives over the speed limit sometimes and is 18. But that guy should be curved <laughs> out yeah. over the speed limit. He should be thrown underneath at 18. Yeah, day. fucking murder him and then kill his family. Like, Okay, Richard. Yeah. I'm, I, I was joking, but uh, calm down. <laughs> he actually goes to the speed limit. He's a great, great guy. <laughs> I don't want to get Andy in trouble now. <laughs> All right. So then uh, one of the beloved chatters decides to chat at John with a question. And then they caught his ass not donating it. I just don't think that's right. Um, Jimmy O'Rizzle, John, did you read my first super chat? We like you see what you think about having Sasha Bar Baron Cohen on. You know, to be quite honest, um, uh, I'm not a fan of Sasha Baron Cohen. So I, I yeah. like, you know, so I, I mean, only because not only does he essentially do my act, but, but he, um, you know, he wasn't very nice when he was a guest on the Tonight Show. I don't know how many times, but people like that. It's like, um, <laughs> you know who also wasn't Not very nice? Not nice like the uh, Army Major. Right. Uh, Tina Fey. Not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, John. We opened the door yeah. here. What was the point of that? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know who also I want to motherfuck for no reason? <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Tina it's not Fey. That, yeah, it's not that he would never <laughs> stoop to fucking bother to be on this show. Yeah. It's yeah. that uh, I don't like him very much. Oh, yeah. that That's the crazy thing about it. Sasha Baron Cohen would never go anywhere near this show. He's show. super famous and successful. Yeah. He has no reason to talk to Suttering John. That question was obviously a troll question, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Why don't you have this guy who's an A-list celebrity? I don't have any A-list celebrities on my show. What are you talking about? Of course not. I could barely get Richard Ojeda <laughs> oh, on dude, my show. The Richard Ojeda thing took like 20 minutes. Like, yeah. I'm texting Richard. I'll look at my Twitter. Uh, try to kill time. Nobody wants to be on, on this. his own show. Oh. It's gotten so bad. Who are 